In this paper, we introduce 3D Dynamic Scene Representation, DSR, that simultaneously discovers, tracks, reconstructs objects, and predicts their dynamics. Given a depth observation of a scene with an action applied to the scene, the goal of the algorithm DSRNet is to predict the object's motion under the interaction. The object's motion is encoded as a dense voxel-wise 3D scene flow. To enable this prediction, the network also infers a 3D amodal object instance mask where the 3D volumetric mask encodes the object's complete 3D geometry, including occluded regions, and the different colors representing different instances. The network then warps the scene representation with the predicted scene flow to produce spatially aligned features for aggregation. In the next interaction step, the warped representation is combined with the new action and observation of the scene for predicting the next object motion. Our algorithm is tested on a real robot setup where a stick is used as an end effector to push objects from the YCB dataset. Scene observations are captured by an RGBD camera. In each step, the robot executes a random push action. 10 interactions are executed in each sequence. On the right, we show our network input observation and output scene representation and motion prediction. Here are more details on our DSR network architecture. DSRNet takes in the depth observation and action as input. The depth observation is encoded as a truncated sine distance function. The scene encoder encodes the input TSDF volume into a scene representation, which is then used to predict an amodal object instance mask. In parallel, the action encoder encodes the input action and the motion predictor predicts object motion represented as the SE3 transform. The scene flow is computed by combining the instance mask and the transformations. The warped scene representation is used as the history in the next step. To quantitatively evaluate the algorithm, we constructed a real-world benchmark data with robot interaction and ground truth object motion. To annotate objects posed accurately during occlusion, another camera is used to capture images from the back view. To annotate the object pose for each interaction step, the annotator selects and controls a 3D object mesh with a keyboard to match the combined 3D point clouds from two cameras. In our evaluation, we want to test whether DSRNet is able to first, accurately predict object motion under different robot interactions, second, aggregate the history and encode object permanence and continuity, and finally, improve the performance of downstream tasks. First, we will evaluate the motion prediction accuracy. We compare with SC3Net and SC3 PoseNet. The visualization indicates that our DSRNet outputs the full 3D volume, but the two baselines are limited to visible surfaces. Furthermore, SC3Net can only distinguish the moving object, and SC3 PoseNet may miss small objects. Here is the next state prediction after warping. DSR is able to more accurately predict the next state with better motion and shape estimation. Quantitative results also indicate our DSR model can achieve better performance on motion prediction. Next, we want to check our model's ability to aggregate the history and encode object permanence and continuity. Object permanence is the understanding that objects will continue to exist even if they disappear from view due to occlusion. In this experiment, we compare our aggregation model with the following alternatives. Single step means that it does not use any history aggregation. No warp means that it does not use predictive motion to warp the representation before aggregation. The green cup is pushed to be occluded by the can. We can see our model can predict the permanence of the green cup, although it can't be observed. But the other two baselines fail. In the next step, the occluded green cup reappears. In this simulation case, the can is pushed and the static Rubik's cube is occluded. Both our model and the no warp model can handle this case since the history contains the information of the static objects. In this step, the Rubik's cube reappears and is then pushed to hide behind the can. Only our DSR net can handle this dynamic occlusion case. No warp model fails due to the lack of historical motion. Object continuity means the representation can recognize individual object instances and track their identity over time. Continuous instance prediction between two consecutive steps are highlighted in green, while discontinuity is highlighted in red. Unlike the single-step model, which is sensitive to the spatial order, 
Our model maintains spatial-temporal continuity via consistent labeling of object instances. In the simulation demonstration positions of four visually indistinguishable objects are swapped after several interactions. The depth observations of the first and the last step are almost the same, but our DSRNet can still track the identities of these objects. It proves that the continuity owes to history aggregation instead of visual appearance. Finally, we want to evaluate whether dynamic scene representation can improve the performance of downstream tasks. The goal of the task is to generate a sequence of robot actions in order to push objects in the scene to match a target state. We apply a simple shooting-based MPC method to generate and plan for a sequence of actions that minimize the cost. In each step, we sample sequences of actions by sampling actions around predicted masks. Then the action with the lowest cost is chosen to execute. In the second step, DSR correctly captures the occluded object and chooses the appropriate action. In the next step, SE3 pose also encounters occlusion, but it loses track of the occluded object and chooses the wrong action. This comparison indicates that the final state of our DSR net is closer to the target state. This results demonstrates that with DSR, the control policy is able to sample actions around the occluded object to predict the next state and cost accurately. Thank you for watching.